Well, I've just got a brand new chap for my MyFit ML7 and it's a four-jaw independent chuck. It's made by the Chinese Sanu um, tool company and it's the K72-125. It's 125 millimeter in diameter. And if I remember rightly, I think I've had about four different Sanu chucks over the last 18 months and all of them have been exceptional quality and I've been able to use them straight out of the box without any cleaning. So that's one thing I've noticed about Chinese chucks. Um, I'm absolutely sure their quality control has improved greatly. Like I say, I've had four without any problems at all. All of them have run lovely and smooth. Um, this one's no exception. I've checked all the jaws. Everything's um, going in and out nice and smoothly. And um, there isn't any movement at all, side movement, um, in the jaws on the chuck there. So that's really good. And the actual overall finish is absolutely superb. And if you're thinking of buying um, any size um, Chinese chuck, I would actually recommend the Sanu brand now. And um, in the past I did have um, one or two bad experiences with um, Chinese chucks. Um, they used to be a little bit sharp and um, needed a bit of deburring. Sometimes it would have um, swarf trapped inside and you'd have to take the whole thing apart and clean it before you could use it. But it's definitely not so now. So like I said, I've bought this one for my MyFit ML7 and I'm going to be fitting this indexing plate. Um, this is a used one that I had on a 125mm 3-jaw chuck. I've now put that 125mm one on my um, Chinese mini lathe. So this is spare and going on this one. And again in the past I always used to try and uh, buy um, chucks that had um, the bolt holes that go right the way through the chuck um, because I actually found those easier to fit to a back plate. You could just use a transfer punch right the way through them. Um, it's not the case with these because they're only uh, drilled in four places at the back with 8mm um, threaded holes. So today I'd just like to show you a special tool that you can actually make up um, to transfer those holes or the markings from those holes onto the um, back plate ready for drilling. And there's also a very important thing to remember if you're going to drill and fit one of these indexing back plates on the Myford chuck. So if you buy a back plate from new, um, no matter how clean it looks, Firstly, give the um, thread a thorough clean with um, one of these Dremel uh, brass brushes. Um, go up and down a few times uh, with some uh, thin oil and then wash it out with paraffin and clean round with a cloth and an airline. And make sure that thread and the back part here is thoroughly clean. So when you've done that, make sure the spindle thread is thoroughly clean as well and then mount this on the um, spindle and then you can actually um, turn this register to fit the back of the chuck. Um, unfortunate because this is the same size uh, for this chuck as well as the three jaw. So that one's already done. But I will be showing um, how I do my um, back plates in a, a coming video soon because I've got to do another one of these. And if you do buy one of these um, indexing plates, um, you only need one. Um, if you have the tool post drill and the uh, pin assembly set up, uh, like I've shown in my other videos, you can use the one um, to drill all your other uh, back plates as well. And any um, future back plates you need, you can actually buy the lower cost plain ones and just use your um, indexing one um, to machine those up all the same. So now I'm going to show you a very simple tool that you can actually make up to transfer the positions of these four threaded holes onto the new back plate. So what I have here is four 8mm grub screws which measure about 15mm long and I have four pieces of um, allen key to fit those scrub screws which I've cut off on the grinding wheel and then I've put a point on the end of those. So now I've screwed all those grub screws into the back of the chuck 
So the end of the grub screw is just below the surface of the back end of the chuck. So now I drop the ends of those um, pieces of allen key uh, with the point um, pointing upwards into the socket of the um, grub screw. And you don't have to be um, critical um, about the length of these um, pieces of allen key when you're making them because you can actually um, screw the grub screw up and down um, to get the um, exact um, depth you want. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So you have to have the pointed end of the allen key um, as close to the um, back of the face of the chuck here as possible. Um, that's so that the actual register on the um, back plate that you've turned must be able to register in the uh, bore of the back of the chuck. And then if it wobbles about like that you've got to find out um, which one is high. Um, I think it's this one here, so I use a pair of pointed pliers just to pull that one out. Screw that one down, say half a turn. Put that point back in and drop that on. And now that doesn't wobble at all, so I know that all those uh, points are exactly the same height above the back face of the chuck. So that's why the pointed ends, uh, when you make them, they don't have to be the exact length. Um, all that you need is uh, them to be uh, fairly close, and obviously they have to stick up above the actual um, socket of the grub screw. And if they vary in length um, slightly, all you have to do is actually take them out, like I've just shown there, and adjust the um, grub screw until they all become the same height. The next thing I do is I use a marker pen to mark the exact positions of those four holes on the diameter of the chuck. And this is actually the critical part of fitting one of these Myford 24 hole indexing back plates. You use the pen markings, drop the um, back plate on like that, and then you make sure that the pen marking is in between two holes there. And then just go round and check the mark is in between holes all the way round. And you can see that one is, and um, that one's perfect. So now I know when I put a piece of brass on the back of there and give it a bit of a whack with a copper mallet that those um, indents on that back plate that are going to be used for drilling the positions are not going to clash at all with the actual indexing holes. And if you don't line it up like this and um, you have it so that it clashes with one of those indexing holes um, you'll be limited on the actual pin depth that you can use or um, you'll weaken the actual uh, position of the actual locating bolt. And it's the same if you come to um, drill a new one of these when you've got one of these on um, the lathe. You can put one of these in a chuck and then um, drill a blank one so you can do all your chucks like I say. Um, 
make sure you check it first that you're going to actually um, miss those um, holes on the three jaw chuck you can miss them as well um, you can see that the um, thread there is in between six and five there and the same all the way round so it's possible with the four position and the three position So now I'll put a thick piece of brass plate on the back of the um, chuck there and use a copper mallet to give it one sharp knock. And then I've got my four centre punch holes ready for drilling. And that's how you transfer blind holes onto a back plate. And they're only very small indents as you can see, but before drilling you can use a nice sharp centre punch and put into that existing pinhole. And those positions are all ready to be drilled. And then just remove the Allen key part. We can just tip them out and put all those away for next time. So that's my eight millimeter transfer screw set. So when I drill the back plate on the bench drill I use a pilot drill first and then the clearance drill for the 8mm Allen bowl and that will all be in perfect position. And just before I go I'd just like to show you on the grinding wheel how I actually um, cut one of these allen keys off um, to make the small pointed end that goes in the um, grub screw and what I use to hold it for doing the um, pointed end. So on the grinding wheel I go about um, probably about 15 millimeter from the end and then I use the corner of the grinding wheel um, to grind a groove all the way round. So I grind it like that. What I mean by 15 millimeter is 15 millimeter from the end of the Allen key here to the center of the grinding. And I don't grind right the way through on the grinding wheel because um, I just lose that um, part or you can actually slip on the wheel a bit. Just thin it down like that. And then all you do is get a pair of pliers and just break that piece off. And then just get one of these cheap um, keyless chucks and I've um, put it on a piece of bar. This is actually um, the uh, spindle out of my tool post drill. Screw that one in the end there like that. Then I can put the piece of Allen key in the jaws so that the jaws locate on the um, flat of the hexagon. 
and let that um, protrude quite a way. Tighten that one right up. And then I can turn that one like that on the end of the wheel and I'll get a perfect cone on the end of the wheel. You don't want to do it sideways because you won't get a perfect cone. You do it with the uh, point or the um, allen key in the centre of the wheel like that. Turn the chuck so it spins that allen key on the end of the wheel and you'll get a perfect cone. So there you can see a perfect point on the end of that um, Allen key piece and that'll be perfectly central uh, when it goes into the grub screw for doing the centre punch holes. And I use the same method of grinding uh, for centre punches, put them on the wheel like this and rotate them and you'll always end up with a perfect point grind. So when I have four pieces uh, that's pointed up like that, I turn them round in the chuck, hold on that hexagon again, and use the chuck like that to hold them to grind the end face of the um, Allen key until I get them all roughly the same length. And you can see there roughly um, how much I have mine protruding from the um, grub screw. Plus you'll see that they're not all the same length. And like I said earlier, that doesn't matter because you can actually screw the um, grub screw up and down until you get them all perfect uh, protrusion from the back face of the chart. So now the back plate is all drilled and deburred and everything's been cleaned again. So now I'll put it onto the chuck and see how accurate that drilling is. Um, the chuck does come with uh, four high tensile steel allen bolts to secure the back plate to the chuck. But I like to fit stainless steel ones. And it is so dead accurate that I can just screw those all home first by hand. And that's it. And when I screw this onto the machine, I'll put the um, chuck key into the chuck like that and just give those a final nip up. So I'm really pleased with my 8mm transfer screw set. I'm thoroughly pleased with the method of transfer and how accurate it is. And I'm very pleased with my new Sanu four-jaw independent lathe chuck.